Fan. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Whoa, what's going on? What's the poo? Oh. <laughs> He's having a bad day. <laughs> He's exhausted. Oh. Oh, wow. All right. He's going to be reclining. Okay. Right there. <laughs> take, take it easy back there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the weather these past few days has just been amazing. Yeah, beautiful. A little and windy, though. Someone needs a shave. Mm. That's gone way too long without a shave. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, who gave a thumbs down? That's what I'd like to know. We just started. That's way too early for a thumbs down. <laughs> Got videos. They probably didn't. They probably like. Oh, we like a more clean shaven gym. Mm -hmm. So they gave us a thumbs down. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> So it's been too windy for you? Uh, yes. Well, at least she didn't have to be on top of the wall today. Actually, are we going to get on top of the wall? I think we were going to do some barbed wire. We didn't end up doing oh, barbed yeah, wire. That's right. <laughs> oh, autumn here. So do you think, oh, are you in the southern hemisphere? Oh. Garden says I haven't shaved in about four years now. That's what it feels like for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, built on the rock home said. Be sure to hit those thumbs up. <laughs> uh so we're we gonna are we still gonna hit the barbed wire? Yeah, we probably could. After mm, the live. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. But how exciting is it? Now, we spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of time and energy pre prepping for Course 13. We finally got Course 13 done. Mm -hmm. And it's looking good. It's looking good. Uh, I think we did that pretty fast. What do you think? What are your thoughts on how long it took to do Course 13? Yeah, it went pretty quickly, I think. I think all their preparation paid off for that. Definitely good to prep, prep as much stuff as you can ahead of time. Get uh, get the barbed wire done. Get some fan bags. Fan bags seem to take a while. All right, quite a bit of energy goes into those. Up to 13, yep. Ooh, Ron. Ron says starting earth bag battery room. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Frodo Davis. There you go. Built on the rock says thirteen down. How many left to go? Don't ask <laughs> don't ask that question. That's not a good question to ask. <laughs> Too many to go. I think there might be like uh just over forty courses in total mm -hmm. to finish this. So it's going to be like, well, like maybe a lot more to go. 27. Morgan Goldshaw Farm, how you doing? Hey, Morgan. Uh, but what I'm hoping, though, is that once we get to a certain height and the diameter of these courses gets smaller, maybe we'll be even able to maybe we'll be able to knock out more courses in a day. Would that be cool? Huh? Yeah. Now I got a couple courses in a day. Well, I won't get ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a little while yet. But it's kind of been interesting working around those forms. Like the window forms and everything like that. Doing the fan bags, doing that box form for the window. But we're almost high enough where like, we're about to cover up the gothic arch on the north side of the house. Mm -hmm. We're getting close to the arch form on the two by two window. And we've now started fan bags on the gothic arch form going over the entrance of the dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once we finish that up, then we'll be at like the loft area. So, like, mm -hmm. technically, like the first floor area will be done. 
Clancy asks, how much is land where you are? I don't know. I've seen a, like a range of prices. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think, uh, I'm not even sure if you'd be able to pinpoint, uh, it's kind of like this much per acre because a lot of it's depending on the, you know, the owners, whoever's selling it. Uh, a lot of people that have owned land, you've been kind of looking at this, but a lot of it, people have a ton of back taxes on it and, uh, other interested parties are snatching up those those properties mm -hmm. so i don't know seems like those people might be trying to sell those lands for a profit yeah probably seems like land is going to be a big business out here but you know it all, it all depends on like what if it's bare land if it's got you know anything on it wells or anything like that mm -hmm. that would drastically drive up the price and where it's located how close to a city what the access is like like um we were in bisbee the other day and i saw a sign that said like i think it was one acre for like five thousand so and i've seen things a lot cheaper mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. so i don't know how to answer that <laughs> yeah uh simply pam says corporate greed and uh, yeah, like a lot of people, they uh, they see that opportunity trying to snatch up um, some of those properties at a really good steal and then uh, sell it, turn around and sell it for a higher price. Any estimate on how much water you've collected from all the rain? Like since we've been harvesting rain all together? Well, thinking <laughs> the last rainstorm. The last rainstorm, uh, probably not much. Just uh, mm -hmm. say we got probably about a half an inch, and the surfaces we were collecting off of was probably the hacienda and, and the, shed. the the shed. So, it's a little bit. A little bit. A little bit of water. We got a little bit in the totes by the hacienda. Yes. I didn't even look in there. Well, you can't see it anyway. It's all painted over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I forget. <laughs> but uh, I still got to mess with the Hacienda totes. It's leaking a little bit if I turn the spigot on. Doug Sandhill flows in this. I think I heard that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doug, he does. And uh, I think I saw some, was it a podcast? Something like that. He's like, I haven't left Bisbee in a year or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't run into him, but we don't go down to Bisbee too much. Arizona High Desert Home says, is pardon my ignorance, but what will the interior walls be covered with? It'll probably be cob. similar, like a cob plaster. Cob everywhere. <laughs> cob on the outside, cob on the inside, cob furniture, cob shelves. And then I'll, I'll do like a, a finishing plaster over that that's a little more refined are you considering a reciprocal roof it would probably cut your time in half it would also look really good Recip reciprocal oh. roofs do look pretty cool yeah uh and we've considered different types of roofs i think we're pretty set on just doing a dome though I mean, yeah, it would it'd probably save us a bunch of time. Yeah, for sure. But there's the added cost of the extra roofing material. Um, plus, then you lose a lot of that thermal mass of just building a heaping pile of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and then... If we can add straw bales on top of the earth bags, then not only do you take advantage of all that thermal mass, but then all the insulative nature of the straw bales as well. So yeah, there, there's plus and minuses to a lot of different uh, roofing types. Mm -hmm. Stella asks, are there any trees around where you guys are? Not near 
our property. Uh, what we have, we do have like acacias and mesquites on our property, but they're, they look more like shrubs. They're kind of short and just have a lot of small like stems going up because there's not a lot of water here. There are like areas um, with larger trees around like seasonal washes, mm -hmm. um, but not a lot of trees. Goldshaw Farm says Doug Stanhope is his favorite living comedian. Really? That's, uh, man, I don't know if I can choose a favorite. I might have a top five or something like that. Yeah. How much water do you have in the underground cistern? Do you test it regularly? We haven't had a chance to get much in there um, because our rainy season was not very rainy. <laughs> yeah, we built the whole thing. The rain, uh, the monsoon season was a flop. Uh -huh. And then since then, our gutters came down and that was a whole big mess but we haven't really had much rain since then anyway yeah we got maybe about a half inch that wouldn't have got too much but you're getting ready to put up new gutters so i say we can definitely i'll, def I'll definitely have this whole new gutter system set up probably by uh the end of april and that's all going to go right into that cistern. So after that, <laughs> hopefully we'll did you start hear, collecting that. Did you hear that? I just made a time commitment. Wait, say that again? Oh, ah, no, you missed it. You missed sure it. I it too. <laughs> <laughs> no one heard that. No one heard what I said. I said it. I said it's my breath. <laughs> But uh, man, I have been busy cleaning things up around here. I, I figured like the outside here was just getting to be a mess, uh, collecting all sorts of like materials from half done projects and stuff like that and scraps. So like I've been getting the wood out of there. I finally got our bags a little more protected. Like for the longest time, we just had our bags and a pallet out front here. I guess, you know, at the time, I didn't think how long <laughs> all this building would take. So I finally moved that into the shipping container. Yeah, we had it covered a lot better. up with the tarp. Covered right? up with a tarp, so it was protected from the UV light, but... That tarp was starting to go. Yeah, the tarp was... So, like, I had double tarps over it, and I was like, <laughs> it's just ridiculous because the wind comes, starts blowing things around. It's got in the shipping container. I feel a lot better. It's definitely protected from the light elements and stuff like that. Much better in there. Um, Joseph asks, when did you get your initial opt-out permit and when is your three years up? Oh, pretty soon, actually. We are just talking about that. I think it's in May, isn't it? It's I'm crazy. I think one of our mistakes is we like we went for the permit right away. Like, technically, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get your permits right away, and then uh, then you can live on your land, like the septic and stuff like that. But I think we did the building permit right away, so we could get the RV permit, so we could be living out here. Mm -hmm. But then we didn't but start building for for quite the longest a while. time. Like, and we definitely wanted to wait at least a year before we started building just to get a lay of the land, make sure everything, and mm -hmm. that ended up what, working out really well for us because oh, plans have it. changed yeah. so much within that first year, let me tell you. Yeah, we would have been in trouble if we just started doing something without, you know. <laughs> yeah, it spilled faster. <laughs> uh, right. Luckily we can get an extension. That one extension should be plenty of time for us to get things done. Yeah, I think it's another year. A whole other year. And I don't, I don't know how much it costs for the extension, but I don't think it's too much. Oh, it does cost? It does cost a little bit of money. Well, probably. Hidden Harvest Grow Lights, hello. I think I saw... Off-Grid McGarvey style in here. How deep for a well in your area? I think your ear 
Arizona High Desert Homestead? Uh, I say at least 300 feet, but possibly anywhere from three to 600, I would say. Arizona High Desert Homestead, thank you so much for the super chat. Super generous of you, thank you. I don't know, there, it seems like there's maybe a little pockets of land where the the water table is higher. Yeah, it, it it depends. I think all the wells around this area are at least around 300 feet, at least to our neighbors slightly. Now that's, I think, our the well slightly west of us. But now if you go east, some of those areas have hit water in less than 100 feet. Ooh, 900 feet. Wow. Whoa. Um, so it could be, you know, could be just a uh, kind of a crapshoot on what you get. Mm. Felt like it was getting a little dark, a little Does that on help? the dark side. Yeah. I think it helped a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> fifty bucks a foot. See, yeah, fifty bucks a foot gets real expensive. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think we would ever like. totally rule out getting a well but f i think for us rainwater harvesting is just the way to go because like we're building infrastructure anyway you might as well harvest water off of that i think it's a little bit more sustainable and a little bit more you know a little bit more controllable you could get multiple water sources going Oh, where do we write for requests for drawings? Well, you can email us. It's on a website too, right? Mm-hmm. How's that, how's that uh, drawing you're working on going now? Uh, pretty good. I'm making good progress. Hopefully I'll be able to get finished by the weekend. If you were to put a percentage <laughs> and how complete it is. What percentage would you say? Uh, uh, at least a quarter of the way. Oh, nice. I have the more like detailed areas taken care of. Oh, and then it's so... just all <laughs> just all downhill after that. <laughs> I think uh, I think somebody asked how my mom was doing. Uh, glad you asked. Making a trip down there tomorrow. I'm supposed to call the facility. I don't think I ever called the facility. <laughs> I'll call on my way. I'm on my way. Um, make planning on making a big trip down up to Phoenix, down to Phoenix, up to Phoenix tomorrow. Be a long drive, but I'll see my mom, see how she's doing. I think I'd like to try and make it up there at least once a month. So tomorrow's going to be the big day for that. So we'll get to see how she's doing firsthand. Yeah, uh, thank you, Arizona High Desert Home. I'll let her. I'll let her know. I'll let her know that everyone's pulling for her. She's really doing really good. Like uh, every time I talk to her on the phone, you know, her voice sounds really strong, almost completely back to normal. It's all right now in the legs and just getting that physical strength back up. Can't believe how uh, how that uh, just getting that COVID really uh, how much that's affected her. Yeah. Uh, Tony knows. Tony was in here. He heard that. <laughs> you gonna be down there, Tony? You gonna be up there while I'm there? Uh, says, enjoy your program. A Chinese tallow tree may do well there. I'll have to look oh. that up. Built on the Rock asks, um, will they let both of you visit your mom? Yeah, they'd let, I think they'd let both of us in there. We could probably both go up. Problem is, about both of us going up, is that we'd probably have to take crew with us because we can't leave crew by himself all that time. Well, I mean, 
He'd survive, but he'd be beside himself by the time we got back. Yeah, it would be like all day. Yeah, I mean, we'd probably bring him, end up bringing him with us, and then, like, you'd probably, she'd probably be able to visit her for a little bit, but then probably have to, like, kind of watch over him. We can't just leave, can't him, just leave him in the car for hours. <laughs> AJ's outdoors. Hi, Jessica and Jim. Hello. Oh, hold it in. Pow. Better <laughs> Jimmy says, better shave before going to see mom. Yeah, yeah, I'll take care <laughs> of this. I'll take care of this. I'll clean up, take a shower, shave, look all presentable. <laughs> uh, Courtney says, crew would survive the trailer. Crew would survive the trailer, may not. Uh, crew would survive the trailer. But if we left crew inside the trailer for a whole day without us being there, I don't know if the trailer would yeah, survive him. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he couldn't be in. He's notorious for tearing things up if people are gone. Mm -hmm. Now we've never had that experience, but uh, your brother, your brother's, yeah, he will go out of his mind. When uh, he was living with my brother, when my brother first got him, he, you know, my brother would have to go to work. And he would leave crew at home and he actually crew actually like chewed his way through a door to try to get out and then he got really sick mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. so like if we left especially like we'd have to put him inside uh, we have a kennel there and he he knows the kennel and he almost refuses to go in there like if we're going like if I open up that kennel door, he just plants his butt on the ground and like turns his back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I go in there. I mean, he'd go in there if I really wanted him to, but he knows what's up. He knows what's up if he has to go in there. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve said, my dog loves to hang his head out the car window while traveling. I noticed in the last video you only had yours cracked for crew. Any reason? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking to my brother uh, the other night, and he had the window open for crew when he first got crew, and uh, then crew saw some kind of animal, <laughs> and he almost jumped out of the car while it was moving. So, yeah, yeah after he, that, he's like, I can't do that anymore. He absolutely doesn't care if he sees an animal. The last thing he's thinking of is his own personal safety. The first thing is like, I got to get that thing. <laughs> Are you Down guys... affordable desert living. That's, that's better late than never. We're glad to yeah. see you here. <laughs> so, say hi to Art. Art's here. Hey. Hey, Art. Are you guys going to move straight over to the second dome as soon as the first is finished? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I think. Are we just going right into that second build? What else will we do? Stop. Stop for a little bit? I don't know. It's like, oh, this is good enough. It's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we have to, but man. Maybe a little break? That's gonna, probably going to be a little bit of a break. Probably, like, I got to, um, before I, we can even start laying bags for the second dome, I have to do plumbing. I think I have to get the plumbing all worked out. So I think there's a little bit of a, a little, there'll be a little bit of a break. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we could use one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did Cochise County give you any time limit to build your earth bag homes or is the RV living loud? We were just talking about that. RV living is allowed while you're building your house. So you get that temporary RV permit to live in there. But then as soon as your house is built, you got to move out of the RV, mm -hmm. enter your house. And you get three years to build and then like an extension, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all. Sorry, I'm late. Was tending some dirt. Well, we're glad you're here at Midlife Prices. Between domes, take her out to dinner. <laughs> B 
between dome. You don't get dinner until <laughs> I, uh, after we build this dome. <laughs> Nah, there's a, we always we always we always get little breaks in between. We don't. It's not like we're working uh, seven days a week on that. Um, yeah, well, I think you always got to take time to recharge and stuff like that. We're always doing something together, going for hikes or something like that. Oh yeah. Recharge the batteries a little bit. Uh, I think dome building, especially when it's just two people, is going to be a, mar a marathon, not a sprint, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jack asked if we're going to do a wash on the inside cab to help balance the light. I think that would be a good idea, especially because we don't have like a ton of windows in there. So maybe like a, a white lime wash or something to give more light. Could be good. Mm -hmm. What about a dog sitter? Well, we've had my brother watch crew, but I don't know if anyone else could do that. Yeah, Peter's the only, like, that dog will love Peter until the day he dies. Yeah. Uh, Peter is irreplaceable. Anyone else who really, it, it takes time for him to get to know them. So it's kind of hard. Yeah, he doesn't trust anyone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Incredibly generous. Thank you. We have to cut the entire outside. Oh, windows. yeah. Yeah. Definitely got to get that protected. Uh, in fact, I was gonna do cobbing today. I was I was gonna do cobbing, but then <laughs> I got uh, caught up in cleanup. But you you weren't uh, you weren't too upset. I don't mind that. <laughs> Cleaning is something I rarely get a chance to do. So when I do it, she's pretty excited about yep. it. But uh, this is the outside area in front of the uh, uh, under the uh, awning is looking really nice. If I may say so myself. It's nice. <laughs> Someone watches crew, their name will be Stumpy afterwards. That's true. <laughs> uh crew surprises me sometimes. He's like he, he can be incredibly he can be incredibly gentle at times. Like we give him a treat or something like that. The most gentle dog you've ever seen taking a treat from your hand. Mm -hmm. But if something if he doesn't like something, he gets crazy. He gets beside himself. people people are like that like my brother's been here sometimes kind of helping us out every now and then and he seems real aggressive to my brother every time he decided he doesn't like him. <laughs> yeah. now crew will be cool like if my brother's sitting down and he's got treats he's feeding him crew will eat the treats <laughs> but when those treats are gone the relationship is over <laughs> <laughs> Crew is crew is a good dog. He's just um, you know it's something about the Akita breed. They're so they're so emotional, you know. But you just gotta you gotta understand the breed. That's yeah. what it is. feel about wood roofs and decks instead of doming the bags yeah i think if we lived in somewhere where we, there was ample wood we'd probably do a lot more with wood oh right right for sure yeah but um especially with lumber prices as high as they are now trying to avoid using a whole lot of wood yeah, I mean, there are a lot of cool uh, different roof areas out there, and it would be kind of nice to maybe get up to a height and 
and then stop with it. But I mean, how cool would it be to actually be able to complete this dome? You know? But there are a lot, there's a lot of advantages to building a dome, and especially in our particular climate. So I'm really excited about locking this in. Now, whether we stick to a dome for the second one, that remains to be seen. <laughs> Do you think you gotta have energy for a whole other dome after this one? Uh, maybe. Maybe if we take a little dome vacation. Jess, where do you and Jim source the polyweave bags from? How much for how many? Well, uh, we always put the link to uh, to where we got our bags in the videos, but it's called um, Pacific, Pacific Packaging. Packaging Company. That's right. But you can probably check um, any place that does like makes bags or any bag manufacturer. Does check it out. printing. And at uh, misprinted bags, which I recommend if you're going to do the single bags like we did, you might be able to get like a bunch of them at a, a discounted price or something. Plus, you get to reuse something um, that would otherwise get disposed of. We got a, uh, you get like smaller size bags and the large size bags, and it's like, 20 cent was 20 cents for the smaller size ones 25 cents for the larger size ones and they come in bundles of a thousand did you see luke skywalker's childhood home as children and wanted one of your own maybe you'll be able to harvest water from the air too <laughs> that was our complete inspiration for what we're doing out here North Star Prepster just says, I would imagine the peak of the dome would hold more heat and keep the lower levels cooler. Yeah, it should. Yeah, uh, my, my thinking on the bags is, I mean, this was one company that we found that had that, and of course they had to get shipped by freight over here, you know, big semi, just deliver this one pallet of bags. If you can find anything closer to where you are, that's always recommended. Lucas, how much did the land cost? Um, we got ours here, 40 acres for a little over 15,000. And I've heard a few people getting better deals than that, but currently, usually it's more than that. And uh, it seems like prices are just going up. A lot of people are looking to sort of get into owning some land. I can't stop looking at the sunglasses on the pool. It's very <laughs> distracting. They're all crooked too. <laughs> Uh, just found you too recently. I'm getting lots of inspiration to do something on my small property, 2.5 acres. Lots well, exciting. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we hope to do. Send a little inspiration, a little encouragement. Joseph, S., do you have another way to donate money so YouTube doesn't take a cut? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Uh, uh, we do have a PayPal. Yeah. Uh, we have a donate button on our website. Mm -hmm. Property is 39 miles from Cal Earth. Oh, very cool. I've always wanted to visit Cal Earth. Yeah. By the time we get to, by the time we ever visit to see Cal Earth would be expert dome builders by then. We'll have more <laughs> earth bag building this time. Well like we're uh, we're looking to we're looking to teach. 
Homestead Witchery, hello. Made it, <laughs> made it here for once. We're glad you made it. Yeah, thank you for being here. Don says, uh, Jim, you use a gorilla card a lot. Is that your original one, or do you go through several of them? Oh, no, that's our original gorilla card. Yeah, we just had to change out the wheels. The wheel, <laughs> Get the non, uh, the non, uh, get the stronger non-flat non -flat tires, no flat tires. Patrice, Patrice's Projects, hello, Justin, Jim. I don't have time to hang out, but wanted to stop in and say hi. Oh, thank you. Hello. Michael asks, have you considered the continuous bag? Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely went back and forth between continuous bag and the, and the individual bags. And there's a lot of good reason to do the continuous bag. I mean, it probably would go much faster. Um, more tensile strength with the tubes and everything like that. CB's Greenhouse and Garden. Just hey. wanted to drop in and say hey to everyone. Happy Easter. Uh, have a happy Easter to you guys. So the continuous bag definitely might go faster, uh, might have a more tensile strength, but usually you can only, I've only found the continuous bag uh, not quite in the width that we wanted. I think the biggest width was 18 inches. Do you concur? Do you I remember that? I think that's the biggest that we found. I don't know if there's... And we needed wider, inches. and we could only find that with the um individual mm -hmm. bags plus the individual bags is cheaper over the dome so you know there's a little bit of trade-off but i recommend doing tubes if you can if you can get away with it in your with the design you're looking for sissy says i love watching i love watching you hard-working people thank you <laughs> <laughs> Also, started watching y'all when you did the cellar floor and walls and the upper floor walls. It's very interesting. Can't wait to see it finished. Let's do. We can't either. Oh, my goodness. So now it's been, uh, now with the start of April, we've been doing this for building earth bags for over a year. Huh? Oh, yeah. Officially, it's been over a year. Show them your muscles. Yeah, oh, you guys didn't know you bought tickets for the gun show. <laughs> <laughs> Larger and wider wheels roll easier, like a yep, yep. I ended up going with um, those smaller. It's like I was looking at replacement tires, and that seemed like the what people usually replace there. That's like what the tire size was for replacement and honestly those tires don't do too bad when i'm uh, pulling them around the the dome but like in that area where it gets a little bit more rocky and the dirt's a little softer it gets a little tougher to, to roll the cart mm -hmm. but around the dome it's not too bad or like if you got to use it for gardening or something like that those tires wouldn't be a bad size cynthia asks, would you ever consider a how-to on buying land in cochise county yeah probably I think we would probably put that. We're looking at doing a series of uh, maybe ebooks or like pamphlets yeah, or something like that. Short ebooks that are kind of inexpensive, just kind of detailing everything that we've learned and experienced. Mm He's been drinking, yeah. Well, tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew says uh, you need to get those guns registered. <laughs> Getting started on his homestead, and hello everybody. I'm outside cooking, but li uh, listening. Uh, what you cooking, bub? What you cooking up? Barbecuing. Ninety Nine Nations video says I want to hug your dog like so much. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Only I can hug him. I think we both can hug him. Do you ever try hugging him? Well, he, I, I can, but you can only hug him for a certain amount of time. 
and he'll allow it for a certain amount of time and then you're not hugging him anymore then you're in a fight <laughs> right <laughs> Midlife prices as it kills me not being able to pet and play with crew. Well, you can pet and play with him. I know. He's like a, a furry teddy bear. Yeah. So midlife prices, Pam, you could probably pet him. No problems. Brian, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because Brian's so tall. I feel like that would, that would be a yeah, challenge. probably. <laughs> Paul asks, at what level will the bag start to uh, move inward to start the dome? They've already, um, it's already started. Mm -hmm. It's actually like, to me, it's like really visible. If you kind of, if you look closely at any of the pictures we post on Instagram or Facebook. If you can see like kind of the profile, the side. You'll, you'll, you'll see it. Yeah. And so one of these videos coming up, I think we'll probably kind of go into, on go that into that a little more. bit more. I think so. I think so. But it's it's crazy because right now it's just so incremental. And I was looking at the uh, the pole compass. And when it gets higher, when it starts to get closer to like 20 feet, like, maybe we should stop saying lake so much. <laughs> but the, uh, the courses step in a lot. Like, um, you know, it's like when you move from like 18 to 19 feet, the uh, the distance it moves in is quite a bit, like probably a foot or so. Is it that much? It's crazy. You marked it. <laughs> <laughs> you marked it out. I was looking at those markings. I was like, oh man. Well, it... we'll have to decide if we can step it in that much. Yeah. And still have it be stable. Because because to... these bags Go are higher. like because these bags are like half a foot. It would literally like it would literally <laughs> stop it. It would literally be moving it in like. A foot over a couple of courses which is kind of crazy yeah i think what happens then usually is like it starts slumping towards the inside more and then you lose the height of the bags hmm. how long will the floor of the other dome last before you get to building it that's a good question that is a good question yeah how long do we want that i suppose we had it covered for a while with plastic but we found it's actually better to keep it uncovered because the plastic was keeping some moisture kind of trapped in there. Mm -hmm. You'd have to, we'd have to get that plastic like firmly on there so any water couldn't get underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, so far, I haven't seen any signs of no, it's still another one. weathering or anything. Do you have to counterweight the bags to keep them from falling in? Nope. Just, uh, well, the bags are kind of their own counterweight because it only steps in like so much per, per mm -hmm. course. Just as long as, yeah, it steps in gradually enough. And then when the whole dome's completed, it kind of locks it all together. Uh, what kind of diet are you using? Well, I don't know if there's a name for our diet, but <laughs> <laughs> it's called the no diet diet. I've kind of been experimenting with, uh, just foods that are more anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So it's like avoiding obviously like processed foods and a lot of sugar, um, and certain foods that, uh, might cause sensitivities which I think we both have sensitivities to certain foods. Like, I think you're lactose intolerant. You're just going to, like, put that out there like yeah, that, Yeah, huh? <laughs> And um, I have a little problem with eggs, like too much eggs. So we try to avoid certain things like that. I don't know. How, you, how are you feeling, like, on our current diet? It's pretty good. But uh, it's been a steady diet of, I'll tell you what the diet is. It's a steady diet of sweet potatoes and onions. Yeah, a lot of that. 
<laughs> That's what the diet is. Uh, Affordable Desert Living asks, Jim and Jess, did you get your property resurveyed before purchase? Nope. But it was already surveyed, and we got the, the marks on there. We didn't resurvey it. Is that important? Should we have done that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it had property markers on there, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Their team moon says, oh, those are terrible sensitivities to have. I couldn't live without cheese and eggs. I know. Ugh. I can't live without that either. Oh, well, how are you doing? I'm eating cheese and eggs. I'm, <gasps> making, I'm making cheese omelets behind your back. What? <laughs> you didn't think crew was eating all those eggs, did you? <laughs> Cranky Babushka, hello. Hey. How large is your property? is 40 acres 40 acres some parts of our property we wouldn't even visit i don't even like i haven't seen that part of the property in forever <laughs> crew makes you uh visit other parts of the property doesn't he yeah <laughs> sometimes crew is like i gotta investigate this certain area mm -hmm. Paul says, you're a pro up on that wall. You are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> she does a lot. You do a lot of crazy maneuvering up on that wall. I don't know how you do it. You're like. I just carefully. I, I'm the one that does most of the wall stuff. Uh, you just I mean, I do, the, do the tamping. I do the tamping. So you do get up on there, but yeah. I'm a little nervous about him being on the wall because he does get vertigo with heights. Well, as I have not experienced vertigo yet on the wall, <laughs> but it, you know, it's still under 10 feet. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How far is your solar array from the dome? What's that? How far is the solar array from oh, the dome? Uh, Maybe 50 feet? 40 no, 50 it's about 40 feet from the, um, from the shed. From the panels to the shed. Oh, okay. Um, and it's about 70 feet from the shed oh. to the dome. Seriously? Yeah, why? Okay. Why, do, why would you, so why'd you say it like that? Yeah, it seems like a lot. It is. So, uh, yeah. So from the panels to the to the dome, I'd say it's probably could probably be about a hundred feet, but it's it's seventy feet to run the electricity from the shed to the to the dome. So that's not it's not too bad. Trisha, if any plans to invite people to live on your land and create a community? Well, that's what we were initially going to do, but that didn't work out so much. Um, we had some family members come out uh, at first, um, but then they decided to do other things, which is fine. But um, I think intentional communities are something that I was kind of interested in. And I think it has a lot of potential for sustainable living. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do something like that, it takes a lot of planning and it takes the right people. So that's something that we weren't prepared for. And I don't think that's a path that we're going to be taking. But what I'd like to do eventually is uh, maybe provide resources for people that, who might be interested in doing that or mm -hmm. setting up sustainable communities of just, you know, people groups of people that are in existing communities right help help connect people and make yeah. those connections i see that uh morgan from goldshaw farm as uh likened us to uh moisture farmers yes <laughs> <laughs>
could you build an outdoor dog run or yard for crew or would he destroy it it depends on what we made it out of <laughs> uh if we built like a you know well, i'm planning on yeah building a we'll, yard we'll have a yard for him uh, someplace where i can run around. might do maybe like a stone wall around it see he's not going to destroy a stone wall maybe <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he can dig the. Yeah, he's almost dug out of his kennel. He's got that little hole under there. Give enough time, he'll get out of there. Michael said, I love watching your videos. They make me wistful of my youth digging trenches. Oh. They paid me to play in the dirt. You guys make me jealous. <laughs> really? Thank you. <laughs> or sorry. <laughs> Usually people wouldn't like to get reminded of something like that. <laughs> um, Jimmy says, we are going off grid doing Adobe bag house in June down there. We are planned for five years for this. Any last minute advice? Any last minute advice? Uh, for building house um i'll just just do it just do it <laughs> <laughs> just uh get those last minute preparations physically mentally to yeah. get prepared for the build you know just get yourself psyched up mm -hmm. let that passion carry you through yeah because uh, it's, it's not always easy try to stick with it be prepared for bumps and things that might not go as planned um but yeah keep that passion keep your eyes on the prize so do you need to let the tamped bags dry or air out for a while before you can cob them nope you cob right away uh the nice thing about putting just like a cob layer over the bags is that the soil over there is is breathable just like the soil inside so it'll still evaporate out of there it's one of the reasons why we didn't want to go with like a like a cement stucco because especially if the bags are drying that could lead to the cracking in the cement oh. you want something a little bit more breathable right. do you think the cob might like draw out any moisture it might Do you guys have fencing around your whole property? We do. Uh, and luckily when we first came here, there are two sides that were already fenced. So we just had to do two sides and we had like the west side of our property done and then it took for us forever. But then we finally got to the, the <laughs> south side. We got that done yeah. and that, that helped out a lot. We had a lot of cow issues before, before that. Can we do a pond or is it too dry out here? Uh, we could we could do ponds, yeah. small ponds maybe. Uh, it's not to say that it wouldn't, they'd probably be dry for quite a bit of the time, but we could probably, uh, it'd be, I think it'd be good to hold some water. Yeah, I think we'd probably have to do everything we could to keep too much water from evaporating. Like mm -hmm. they would have to be fairly deep and shaded protected from wind oh no q a after yesterday's episode i cannot wait to see another one like it we won't have to wait too long we'll have another episode out saturday very cool i'm excited i'm excited about these next few courses i can't wait until we get to these uh it'd be nice it'd be cool once we get past these uh all these window forms and arch forms and stuff like that and i think once we do that It'll go a lot quicker. Rockin'. And Jack wants to know if we've worked out what to do with the geodesic dome. Oh, um, I think it's going to end up being some type of greenhouse. Most likely. I think, uh, yeah, I think we have plans. We'll probably cover it on plastic. Uh, maybe put uh, straw bales on the north-hand side. Maybe we'll dig down a little bit but it'll probably turn into a greenhouse.
You're working on my favorite course, lucky number 13. Absolutely. <laughs> 13 was a fun course to do. Oh, I can't wait to can't wait to, to keep building on that. It's exciting. I feel like we still haven't mastered the bags going around the Gothic arch forms yet. Those ones are a little trickier than the Roman arch forms. Yeah. It's hard to get that angle, right? Talked about the cleanup, right? Yeah. Things are looking a lot neater over here. Christian, thank you so much for that generous oh, super thank chat. Thank you. Have a great week. You have a great week as well. Thank you so much. So, yeah, so 13 Moon says, I was wondering how you'll do the top of the Gothic forms. And the Gothic forms will pretty much work very similar to the, to the Roman arch forms, right? It's just that uh, the bags are tend to get shaped a little bit differently, and it's a little bit more narrow at the top, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, but it still still works with key stealing bags, and they just have to get jammed in there, right? Yep. <sighs> Makes me nervous because we're about to we're about to finish up the the first Gothic art form, so we'll get a this will be our first one. Yeah. We've done the Roman arch before, but we have never completed the Gothic arch, so that'll be tricky. I can't wait to see how that turns out. I'm excited. I'm excited to... I'm with you guys. I don't know what's going to happen with this. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark asks, what is the ground temperatures at what depths? I don't know offhand. I remember looking at... Uh, at that before it seemed like it was around 60 degrees 65 yeah or something i think so here um maybe at at six feet or lower i could be wrong but that's well we'll be able to test it pretty soon yeah i'm excited to find that out uh different says do you think you'll ever make a swimming pool <laughs> uh i'd like to at some point, uh, like an, if we did, I think we would do like a some type of natural swimming pool. Yeah, natural. Yeah. But uh, you know, that would have to be really awesome at rainwater harvesting to do that, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've had dreams of a natural swimming pool. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit down on the list of things that we want to put in, but uh, mm -hmm. it would definitely be a nice addition. I tell you, sometimes after. Uh, after a long day at building, I could go for a swim. Huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll build a hot tub. A hot tub. Hot tub time machine. <laughs> they want to do a natural pool also someday. I, I, I love those things. Those things are look amazing. Mm -hmm. 99 Nation video says, I first see a stunning transformative food forest surrounding your dome home in no time. We see that as well. I'm excited to get to planting. I think uh, to get to planting things, growing things, uh, I got plans. I might not be able to wait until the dome is done. <clears throat> we get a little downtime between courses, so <clears throat> there's some things I definitely want to build on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward. I'm looking. Do you think a pond natural pool would draw in predators? It would definitely draw in, yeah. I mean, it would definitely draw Wildlife in. Wildlife would just flock to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. It'd be interesting to see uh, what kind of animals would start coming around then. Just because even it's amazing what little activity we've been doing and how that starts drawing in, all the birds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I mean, they love the awning over here. They all love the hacienda. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you technically you put out food for the birds over at the hacienda yeah. so i mean it's nice to have all the birds out here and it's wonderful and you got the bird bath they love that mm -hmm. so yeah i wouldn't be i want to be opposed to having wildlife come over here and stuff like that i mean yeah you're gonna have your dangerous animals along with some of your um less dangerous animals <laughs> but uh hopefully 
a nice balance would uh, would be appropriate and kind of keep things under control. Just snakes. Got to watch out for the snakes. <laughs> hmm. Sure, you've answered before, but dishes off grid. Uh, uh, wash it. Just dishes? Uh, di yeah, uh, nothing off gritty about our dishes. Uh, we just, you know, we do our, all of it on the uh, RV. So we got an RV pump in there. And then once, so once, uh, once we're, we, I the mean, tank we is full of wash, water, it just hand washes it. But we, the soap we use is like a natural soap that we can use with gray water. So all that water <laughs> goes out and it waters a tree. <laughs> Dr. Bronner's, you gotta love it. Yeah. But uh, our time is up. Ooh, we're over an hour. Uh, everyone, uh, thanks so much, man. This hour went super quick. I'm glad you got to answer some of these questions. If we didn't get to your questions, hang on to them. We'll, we'll try and get them during the next live at Thursday, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We really appreciate it. Always enjoy getting a break from uh, and visiting you guys after the, you know, <laughs> give us a break from the build. Thanks so much for our moderators. Our moderators are all lit up in blue over there. Go check them out. They always do such an amazing job. Thanks to all of you. And uh, have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye.